decided early on in our administration that we were going to seek good relations with Egypt and others of Israel's neighbors. Israel's interests are better served to have the United States a friend of Israel's neighbors and potential enemies. Next to Secretary of State Kissinger, are talking with all parties in an effort to find peace. After a time elapsing six years, Egypt and the United States normalized their relations. Now, the American flag is raised again. I would stop in this room because I just sort of gathered strength. 
just from being in this room. We're liking it. It's dying, it's dying, they're making. So this tree was planted from the seedling as well because it's two years later, a couple years after it was planted. Um, so they finally replanted it with a seedling from the original. But on the 20, that tree is original for the one you see on the 20. So that's why it's called the Jackson. Uh, You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you guys, enjoy. Thank you. Oh. where Richard Nixon was born. And then just a few feet away. Where he is buried.
in 1912, Frank and Hannah Nixon and their three-year-old son, Harold, bought 8.2 acres and started a citrus grove, lemon and orange trees primarily. Planted that pepper tree, ordered this house from a mail order catalog, it was arrived in three crates, put it together, and in January 1913, Richard Nixon was born in that community house. Two other boys were born while they lived here, so a total of four Nixon boys lived in this house for a period up to nine years. They were here from 12 to 22. But the house has never been moved, altered, rebuilt, changed in any way, shape, or form other than a coat of paint. At one point, they lifted it up, took the old brick foundation away, poured a concrete slab, and set it back down. But that's the only thing that's ever been done to the house. And inside the house, Everything, everything's real. They use this stuff on a daily basis their whole life. Uh, you know, I find it uh, shockingly amazing that it survived all those years. First of all, the whole time they had it, then when Mrs. Nixon passed away, uh, it went into storage for over 20 years and uh, brought back out of storage, placed in the house under the supervision of Mr. Nixon and his brother Edward. Uh, yeah, Mrs. Nixon's sisters, she had five sisters and one brother, and they were very instrumental in providing the boys with reading material and so forth. He was born in that bed under those covers. In January, that very bed. January 9th, 1913. If you like, you're not supposed to, but I'll let you go through here. And uh, let me get out of your way. <laughs> And you can see the rest of the house. The, re the house originally was two bedrooms, but when the boys became old enough to sleep on their own, they built out the loft into a bedroom, the attic, and they turned the second bedroom into a little sewing room and a toilet. Oh, I'm sorry, what's your first name? Tim. Tim? Why don't you step in here? Go ahead and finish what you're doing. But step in here. Okay. Stand sort of right in the middle of that carpet. Okay. And that's that's the five or the four five Nixon boys all at the age of four. And Harold on the left, then Richard, Francis Donald, Arthur, and then Edward. Edward was the baby of the family. He was born in 1930 and uh, eight years after they left here. Harold, the oldest, died at 23 from TB. And Arthur, the fourth son, died at age seven from TB. So out of the five Nixon boys, only three made it to adulthood. President Nixon could play proficiently five musical instruments. Piano, and that, this is the piano, that's the clarinet, and the violin there on the side of this wall. He played all those proficiently. And these are the actual items. It's amazing, don't you think, that this stuff amazing. survived? Survived all the yard sales and estate sales, etc. So, if you would, I just continue on okay. the bed. I'll meet you in the kitchen. Yeah, this is the sewing room. This is the uh, stairwell leading up to the little bedroom where they slept. Two little beds and a chest of drawers up there. Saddle for the horse. And one horse and one goat. Horse was used to ride, pull the buggy, pull the plow. Here's all the things that Hannah used to make food. Ice cream, coffee grinder, butter churn. Literally. Now, initially, they had a pump and a cistern collected the rainwater mm -hmm. from the roof. And, and long after they started living here, they got running water. No. Okay. You've done a great job telling me about it. Good. And in the opening line of his memoirs that he wrote when, like, when he left office, 
the first sentence is, I was born in the house my father built in Riverland, California. I'm very proud of this. The more weight you put on it, the fewer passengers you can have. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't tell you. You can't take pictures. So it's not an emotional love, but a volitional love, which is entirely based on one's decision to commit oneself to love. This is right the time for both of you to confirm your own will and make a decision to love each other.